With me now is David Balin, City Global Wealth Management CIO, and David Bonson, Chief Investment Officer at the Bonson Group. David B. and David B., welcome to you both. And David Bonson, I'll start with you because I sense you might take issue with my bearishness, perhaps. Uh, what, what would your view be at this point on the market? You know, Kelly, as I was listening to you describe some of those factors, I was thinking that some of them I don't view as negatives. I mean, housing correcting to a place of affordability and reasonability, I think, is a positive thing for the economy, not negative. But I certainly agree that oftentimes, though not always, the inverted yield curve indicates it doesn't cause a recession. It indicates a recession to come. But there are plenty of false alarms that have happened throughout history. I personally believe we have a greater chance than not of going into a recession. But I still strongly suspect it ends up being a mild one, much like the 2002 recession, where much of the job losses were limited to one sector and even one part of the country, that being technology, which was way overhired and, frankly, overpaid. So I wouldn't say that I'm bullish on the economy, but I do think we all have to have a little bit of humility here that the jobs data and a lot and even the way credit spreads have responded to this brutal tightening from the Fed, it hasn't been that bad yet. And I am open to a number of different outcomes that could come from here. Yeah. And to your point, that 2001 recession was only about six months long and it wasn't very right. deep at all. And of course, it had 9-11 towards uh, the end of that. David Balin, I'm curious what you think. The, the narrative forming seems to be, well, even if we're going into a recession, maybe the market's already priced it in. Is that a, a, a historical possibility, a rational one right now? What do you think? Well, the market is priced in, you know, the market has been signaled that there's going to be a recession now for the better part of a year, right? And I think we have to look at the degree to which, you know, companies have actually taken action, right? They've reduced their CapEx. They've actually reduced, you know, as many costs as they can. They postponed certain investments. So they're you know, getting ready for one. But I think what we're missing in all of this is that this is a rolling recession. You've already hit upon areas of the economy where the recession is well underway. And when a recession is well underway, inventories are coming down, whether it be new houses, whether it be manufactured goods, whether it be the sort of supply of finished goods, all of those are already coming down. And inflation is already coming down. So the Fed's actions have actually had beneficial impact on inflation. So what investors need to do is to think about where they want to position portfolios in 2024. And in our mid-year outlook, which we launched today, we found several areas, right, you know, small and medium-sized stocks, non-U.S. shares. And perhaps the most important thing that investors can do is to, is to move from cash, which is yielding, you know, 5 percent if you buy a T-bill, and to start buying, you know, intermediate debt, right, to be able to maintain, right, higher rates for longer, whether it be in investment grade or preferred stocks. And why they should do that is that if inflation does come down in 2024, let's say from, you know, 4 percent to 2.5 percent, they can capture and maintain a real yield of 2 to 3 percent relatively easy, which mm -hmm. is not something that is typically available to the typical investor. So there's a lot for people to do, and a lot of people are frozen right now in, you know, look at the markets and they're afraid of the recession when they're not looking at the opportunity to really build better portfolios for the next 6 to 12 months.